this is what I woke up to this morning. This woman, I don't know if she's drunk or not, but she just come barreling into my Tahoe, wrecked my Tahoe, and then had the nerve to become irate with me. So I called the cops. We got two officers dispatched. She really messed up my Tahoe. Look at this. Thank God that the Explorer didn't get hit too bad. I guess the tow hitch helped it. Hell no. This way. You're gonna help her push her car off of your car so she can run. Yeah, what is she, white or what? And she sure is nasty. She doesn't look Mexican. The kids look Mexican. I'm gonna have to take off that um, what? like hammer it back down. Hmm? She really messed up my baby. Give me the um. We don't want. Take the insurance too. Take the insurance too. Yeah, she was irate. Like we were pawn scum. I tell you, I think she's white trash. Is she drunk? I think she's high because the, um, the officer didn't smell. If the officer smelled alcohol, they would have tested her already. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me see the explorer. Oh, it's not that bad, actually. It's yeah. That's fine. That is the minute they left, put the explorer in the yard. Mm -hmm. So the license plate, that's, you know, it could be worse. The size it's just looks stretched up like a It could have been Jada's car, but man. Because of the neighborhood that we live in, they dispatched two officers right away. If this was LA, it would take three hours and it would never come. Her car is so messed up that even the axle is bent. She had the nerve to tell the police officer. She don't have to tell him her name. I guess when you light skin, you could do that. It's been eight hours since that footage was recorded. All this happened at about 7.04 in the morning. And let me tell you what happened. We woke up early because I had a stalker I'm calling everybody stalker when they call and they harass me and I don't know who they are. I call it more of a prank caller, but all right. <laughs> he called me at 6 o'clock in the morning through my Google number because that's the number that I put at Craigslist for um, my um, car business. And he called and he says, hey, Barbara, does your booty smell like ass? I'm like, what? Joe, the phone's for you. And I threw the phone at Joe in the bed. And Joe's like, hello? And they hung up in his face and then he waited like four hours before he started to call over and over and over again with his foolishness so i'm saying it's from craigslist but it could be from youtube because that's the google number that i put out there so Man. if that continues i'll just take the google number off of my regular phones that ring and i just won't be able to get calls from anybody you know what i mean mm. um, uh huh 61 dollars for the daylight like Oh my God, it's six, 61 dollars for my taillight because I have custom, my Tahoe is customized guys. The guy who owned it before me customized it. So anyways, um, Joe, we came out here early. I'm operating on not enough sleep. Joshua went to bed at three o'clock. Uh, Jada had, had us up at four yesterday. So it's just like we're, we're operating on not enough sleep because of Jada's you know, illness. And so we walked down the hallway I think I went to the kitchen. Joe <laughs> drew the curtains open and just to you know have the sheer curtain. And when he looked out, he saw like the car was pretty close to the Tahoe, but he wasn't sure if the people were broke down or not. But he saw like the boy was pushing it or whatever. So he went out there to see what's wrong. You know, did they need help? And that's when he saw that they smashed up my Tahoe. And so he's like, "You hit my Tahoe!" And then she's all like, you know, acting very irate with him. And so I didn't know that was going on because Joe ran back to the house and says, come quickly with a the camera. They hit the Tahoe. And so I ran down the hallway to get Joe because he had just taken a shower 10 minutes prior and I knew that he was probably dressed. Jada was in the bed still in pain from her illnesses. And I wasn't dressed. I had my nightgown on. So Joey ran out there with my camera and he's snapping all the pictures and stuff. And then Joey runs back inside and get Joshua up. He, remember, he just went to bed four hours prior. Joshua's... Uh, What's wrong with this fly? Mm -hmm. Josh was rewinding the footage from the security camera and saw right when the hit happened, dragged it off to the cell phone and by then the, okay, I'm going a little bit too fast. I'm mm -hmm. telling the story from behind. Yeah. <clears throat> so when I got out there, 
just remember what, what all I just told you. So when I got out there, I didn't remember that the first thing I asked her was if she was okay. Because she had like a 15-year-old kid with her. So I guess my caring kicked in because after that, my caring went out the door, okay? <laughs> so Jory said, Mom, you asked her if she was okay, and she answered you kind of rough. And I said, Joe, did you get her information? Did you get her driver's license and her insurance information? And she's like, insurance for what? That's nothing. It's and not said, nothing. And I said, what? Well, that's going to be nothing that you're going to pay for. Joe called the police. And Joe's like trying to unlock his phone. <laughs> He's like, I can't unlock it. Huh? And so he... I grabbed the phone from him and I called 911 and I said, please dispatch a car right away. Somebody hit my car on the street and she was trying to run because she was trying to run. That's why they pushed the car back and she mm -hmm. was trying to take off, but the car couldn't go because the, the axle's bent. Yeah, so the wheel's like bent this way out. Yeah. And so the first police officer came, she was female and she was very, very rude to us. Right away she went to her, got all her information yeah. that she wasn't giving. And then we're standing on the, you know, in the yard waiting because we're not going to approach the cop. Let them do their work. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And so um, finally the, the bike officer pulled up and he came to us and he was a sweetie. And he got all our information and we told him what happened. We showed him the footage. And then um, I said, make sure that she's not high on something. Because if she was high on alcohol, that officer would have smelled her breath and tested her. But she's on something because the way she's acting so irate. I mean, the woman told me when I called 911, she says, I don't have to give you my name. But I'm like, what is the, um, the, the model of your car? Because the make was Chevy. And I, I didn't know what kind of Chevy it was because it wasn't written on the car. And she's like, I don't have to tell you. I'm like, what is your name? I don't have to tell you. And they're like, what does she look like? like she looked white. I said, well, she could be Mexican. I don't know. She, but to, I wanted to tell them she looked white trash. She does. And so, she looks um, like the typical cartoonish looks, version of Yeah, that. yeah, she really does. Yeah, whereas you can tell her with a giant big Coke cup full of Coca Coca Cola, you know, what yeah. I mean? like that. Yeah, high on uh, caffeine and nicotine. That's that, what. That, that's what she looks like. Hard coffee. And, and she's like, coffee. keep throwing up her her hands. And when I said, ma'am, how old are you? Because they wanted to know what was her she age. And I said, million. she looked like she's fifty five. I said, she doesn't want to tell me her age. She looks fifty five. And she almost had a heart attack because later on she tells the cop she was born in 72. My sister was born in 72 and she's six years younger than I am. That woman looks like she's at least, I was being kind. You were being generous. I was being generous were, and kind when I said 55 because she really looked really 60s. old. Yeah, and so she's going on and then the daughter comes. I guess they live around the bend because where I live, this street is like a horseshoe. So this is my little street here where nothing happens. Nothing bad happens right here, Josh. And then you go around the bend, and it's a bunch of apartments oh, and separate, condos. Separate pack of dogs every once in a while roaming yeah. the streets. You know, a pack of four dogs. <laughs> They're, I mean, they, they zoned it for five way back when in the 70s, and they built a bunch of condos and apartments, and people move in and out all the time, so we don't know who lives there. We don't even go around that neck of the woods, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then you go down the next street back there. So like the cops say, if you're coming down the street, you've got business down the street because nobody really comes down here unless they live down here. So you would have found her anyways, even, even if you didn't get the license plate but I'm so glad that Joe opened the window on time well open the curtains so um, she was irate the whole time she told the officer that he better watch how he speaks to her I looked at the officer and said oh some people are just it, what is going on in this day and time officer they just feel so privileged though huh I'm like you can't tell an officer you better watch how you talk to me I mean, if you brown like Joshua and Joe and Jory, you might have a foot in your neck. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, hog tying <laughs> you or something. It's like, what? I think if it was a, a younger officer. Yeah, you know? he, he would have been in her face. Yep. Yeah, this officer is older and he probably figures, you know what, I see this crap all day long. I'm just going to do my work, write up this report. And she going down. So she, um, he says, can your car move? And she said, no. He goes, I'm going to call a tow truck. And she goes, call a tow truck yeah. then. And she stormed home. She went home to the apartment. I go, is she gone? Do we have her address? Do we have anything on her? And he goes, no. And I'm going to wait right here to see if she comes back. She says she's coming back with her ID. She came back. She said she can't find her insurance. <clears throat> I heard the officer ask her <clears throat> if she was the registered owner. And she said no. So we're assuming the daughter was the registered owner. The daughter was no raise the sunshine either. The daughter was mad because my kids were out there on the lawn and she's asking the officer, why do her kids need to be out here? I'm like, why do she need to be out here? And I'm a grown adult. You know? Piss <clears throat> off. You know what I mean? And so, um, oh my God. So I haven't even vlogged for the past eight hours because I am so tired physically, spiritually, mentally. I am so tired right now because mm. Jada's been 16th to 18th. 
my camera is acting stupid and I don't really think it's the camera it's the battery and then we're kind of isolating it to the thing that charges the battery the little head thing right Josh little charging dock or whatever you yeah want to have. and so I, I couldn't even vlog all day because the camera's been charging all day and so um, I just kind of you know called my insurance agent I have a good insurance agent I have State Farm I don't have full coverage on the Tahoe because the Tahoe is not worth I think if the Tahoe was worth like more than five thousand dollars I would have put full coverage but it's worth less than five thousand so I didn't put full coverage but I do have liability and I have uninsured motorists and for you guys that don't know how that works let me tell you you can have liability which is what the law requires and if you hit somebody your insurance company will make it right for them however if you don't have uninsured motorist and somebody hits you and they don't have any insurance you're done there's nothing they can do there's nothing well there's nothing you can do to recoup any kind of loss unless you sue that person in small claims court so thank you god mm -hmm. i have uninsured motors when i called my insurance agent I'm like lance please tell me i have uninsured motors he goes i would have let you sign something in my office saying what an a word you were if you did not get and he goes, you know, I take care of my people. I've been with him since 1991. That is cool, dude. I am never leaving Lance Douglas at State Farm. Never, ever, ever, ever leaving him. Good people. So he's a friend now. Yeah. You know, he's a family friend. So anyways, um, where was I in the story now? So the, the Explorer got hit, but the Tahoe hit the um, toe, hitch. toe hitch. So the Explorer is not damaged. Praise God. You, you all know I have to sell that Explorer. I can't be fixing a car that I don't have any insurance on. And you know what? If my hubby would only listen to me, a lot of things could be avoided because I told him, don't put the Explorer on the street. I said, we don't have insurance on it, even though the tags are not expired, leave it in the yard. And he was you know, messing around with something on it yesterday and he put it on the street. I'm like, why did you put it on the street? He goes, because I'm gonna move the Tahoe. I'm like, why are you moving the Tahoe? Put the Tahoe on the street. And so if the Explorer was left on the street alone and the Tahoe wasn't out there to, to you know, uh, bear the brunt of the hit, the Explorer would have been damaged and I would have had to come out of pocket to fix that Explorer and then I would have taken a loss. Yeah. So let me show you the miracles in this. The first miracle is that Joe opened the curtains in time to see her. The second miracle is the fact that the camera recorded everything. The third miracle, miracle is that the um, Tahoe got hit and not the Explorer. And the fourth miracle is that we're not in, we were not in the Tahoe. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're I, not I, out there. I give it one more, the Tahoe can still drive. Yeah, the Tahoe is drivable. Because yeah, it could have really um, messed up our axle the way she hit it. According to my claims adjuster at State Farm, they're going to run the license plate to see the, um, the VIN. Next time we have to get the VIN because that would have been easier for them to just use the VIN. It would have been annoying to get up into that car because she probably... Oh yeah, she, she was she was, she was was fighting. Yeah, you'd be on top of that She car was fighting, yeah. yeah. So they're going to get the VIN. They're going to see who the RO is, which is the registered owner. And then um, they're going to contact the registered owner to see if they have insurance. If they have insurance, they're going to put it all through their insurance. If they don't have insurance, then State Farm is going to have to make it right with me through uninsured motorists. I won't have a deductible because of the fact that it is uninsured motorists because I didn't cause the accident. Mm -hmm. And um, you can get up to $3,500. I don't know what all that's going to come to. Joe already looked and said the light, the light alone is $61 because we have ca custom lights. Because mm -hmm. the young man that owned this Tahoe before I bought it, Actually, the Tahoe wasn't even in his name. His parents owned it. They bought it in 04 when it was new, and they had it forever, and then they gave it to him to come to college here in California. They live in Arizona, and then he was tricking it out with the chrome and the, the what do you call the thing, the um, custom stereo and the lights. Custom and uh, rims. Custom rims and all the custom stuff he was putting in the Tahoe, and then he realized he couldn't even keep it to pay for gas, so he traded the Tahoe for another car from the guy that sold him the radio, because the guy was the manager of a store that sells the custom radios. And that guy put it up for sale. I uh, saw it. I went and bought it in Chula Vista. Remember when I rode back and forth back in 2015 uh. to make the paperwork right? It's because that guy couldn't sign nothing on the paperwork, the one yeah. that owned or, or managed the store mm -hmm. he had to go to the young man so joe finally met the young man and he gave us the second key and a second remote and he's like told us the history of the car that it's never been in a wreck and you know that's why i keep telling you guys i love my tahoe and the only reason i would sell it is to get money to do my business you know so now i can't sell it and joe is like maybe this is god's way of telling you mom don't sell your tahoe I'm like but i need money so anyways yeah cause it's to gonna be a that, while that thing it's not a little spot you're gonna have to rip off a chunk of stuff maybe just replace it because it's kind of shattered whatever check they cut me whoever cuts the check their insurance or my insurance i'm going to go find somebody to fix it for me i'm not going to go through 
where the insurance will like nah. suggest that you go through because they're gonna eat all your money. But so I'm gonna go to somebody now. like my down where my dad has his shop. They um, do really good work and they charge a decent price because they know my my dad. And so I'm gonna go through them, you know, and and, and fix it that way because I want my Tahoe fixed. Yeah, it, uh, <clears throat> it sucks so much, man. Now I gotta deal with this stress because I assume she's taking something because even if it wasn't drunk, she's had like. Do you have how like the, how the hit is gonna be in this video? Yeah, that's the opening. Did you? Hey, did you guys hear the sound effect from the opening? That wasn't a sound effect. The camera doesn't record sound, but she, I found the perfect sound effect for it. And she wasn't even dead on behind it. She, she was going fine, and then she just went whoop. She just swerved. Just, <laughs> I, I don't know what that is because she hits it at a weird angle. And when the kids, she was probably fighting with the boy. Um, the boy was probably cheeking her off, not wanting to go to school, and she was probably fighting with him, and she careened. And um, I texted it to my dad, to my sister. To who else? To, uh, to some of you that watch that. I have your phone number texted to some of you. And I go, this is what I woke up to this morning. I'm like, I can't write this crap that I go through. Mm. And I don't have victim mentality. So I don't view myself as a victim. So um, I, Jada said this morning, I, I feel like Job. I'm like, just always remember, when you get attacked, it's because a promotion is coming up. You know, a promotion is coming up. So I really do believe that. Um, I, I don't know if my eyes look tired, but I feel extremely tired, but I still want to go to the gym if I can today just to sit on the bike, turn on my Frasier on my phone, and just ride and just relax. The bike relaxes me, just unless somebody smelly comes next to me. stairs. Stairs are spaced just far enough, and you're high enough in the fan so you can't smell nothing. Yeah, oof. and it's not that it's body odor, Josh. Most of the time, it's their perfume or cologne. All right, fabuloso. Oh, or they come with that fabuloso they spray it on the paper to wipe the bike. I was like, oh. Hey, oh. I, have, I have not. I had a mop of um, the whole floor of Hollywood video with Fabuloso. That was awful. <laughs> that was painful, man. So I think Joe saved the day because he opened the curtains at the right time. Normally, one of us will go and open the curtains because we want the sunlight to come in. But I went straight to the kitchen because I wanted to make Jada some type of an omelet because I'm making sure that Jada's not getting in salt, she's not getting in sugar, and sure she's not she's getting drinking. in um, acid. And she's drinking a lot of water because she has to heal. And so um, the people, the, the Guatemalan people next door, they called over there and laid hands on her because the old lady is a pastor. Oh, let me tell you about my neighbors across the street. I've never really talked about them before because they are friends, but I'm going to talk about them right now. Yeah. The wife was backing out. If you guys uh, saw the footage, I'm going to play it again right now. You know, you know when they come back home, it's like, what happened? I know. Hey. Joshua, can we record? The, is it hard to go back to where you showed me? Where no. I could just record my camera? No, I can go back. It's like okay, we're going to record the camera. So you, you, it's going to look kind of a little bit fuzzy, not as clean as the opening clip. But you see where she was backing out. The car was coming, so she probably saw the car and stopped. She stopped the car. once, yes. Yeah, because oh, she, she saw the car. Because yeah. she saw the car. She stopped, and the car slammed into my Tahoe. And she continued to reverse. She, continu she waited a second, continued to reverse, came out of a car, locked the garage down, and then backed out and went and did not even call me to say, yeah, Barbara, I somebody if, just hit your Tahoe. I understand if you got out of work or something, but you could have called. She could have pulled over up the road here and called me. I would have done that for her. Yeah. She did not call me. If Joe hadn't opened the window, he wouldn't have seen anything. My neighbor all the way down by the apartments heard the crash. You know, I don't know how come we didn't hear the crash. I think we were probably in the room when the crash happened. You know, so, but it's like, oh my God, you, you can do that. You know, and the whole, and I know that they are going through some issues, you know, and they, they have to stay on lockdown or whatever, whatever, because, you know, you, you guys know that I've talked about them before, but I never revealed their business about what they're dealing with, but I'm done. Yakabo, I'm done. Okay. Because it's like, I don't care what the hell I see going on over there. I'm not going to call you. When the crazy man where the parents used to own the house and he calls to talk about what he's going to come do to the house. I'm not even going to warn you. Right, but like, I'm done. Out, bro. I'm done. You, you don't even call me. Don't even step to my face this evening and tell me, she is. oh, I saw she what is. happened, but I figured she your is. camera picked it up. She is. That's exactly She's going to call, happen. right? Exactly. Oh, she, Barbara, yeah. what happened because I was going to work, but I figured the camera <laughs> you know, would have seen you it. You know she answered, but like, you saw. Just do that. But like, you saw. I saw her, so I know she saw. Mm-hmm. You know, she just went right by my car. Can you believe that's not neighborly? I mean, even these people came out and they're like, are you guys okay? Thank God we weren't getting in the top. This is, every time I sit down the vlog today, this man come and start to eat some kind of fruit. And he go, 
Where he find watermelon from? He tell me the watermelon was done. Did you toss them all? Yeah, but look how he find. I feel like he's. Let me tell him about my family. We hide food. <laughs> we do. I have my sausages in right now. Like. Let me tell you how protective I am of Josh. I know that for Josh's breakfast, he likes one slice of his sourdough, one egg. That's it, right? One flat egg, yeah. And two of his sausages? Three, three, three is a serving. And I don't mess with his sausage. I don't like the smell of it. Yeah. But if I see the eggs running low, I'll go hide him an egg in the back fridge somewhere so they won't. he'll wake up and not have to have the shock <laughs> of not having an egg, you know? But they don't. people don't do that for me. They don't pad things for me. They'll, this is the last orange juice, and we know mommy like orange juice. I'll drink it. I stay away from the orange juice, man. <laughs> if I do, it's like a little, little, little shot glass. Mm -hmm. Well, just to taste it. Man, I wish I had some Milo today, man. I finished Marie's Milo last night. Marie, uh. one year, one year, it took your Milo. <laughs> you guys, thank you so much for the donations that you've given me this month. You guys have been so generous, and it, it's helping. It really is helping. Okay. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, and I pray that the Lord will give you a thousand-fold return on your investment into my life, all right? So I don't think I'm going to vlog anything more today. I'm tired, guys. I want to get this up, even if this is a 10-minute. I don't know how long we've sat here and chat for a while, right? Because mm -hmm. the first few... Does the camera have it up how much time we've used? Uh, I don't see anything. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> We're looking to see if it says how much time we recorded. I'm glad the battery lasted so we can record. Thumbs up the video if you like it. Share it all that good stuff. And then I'll see you guys tomorrow. By the way, this woman that my dad does business with, when, she, when he called her to do business, she's like, are you okay? Because I heard about this accident. So he found out that I talked his business on the blog. Like, oh my God, you guys, shut up. Don't go back and tell him. Shut up. Wait, how did he <laughs> find out that we got hit already? Grandpa? Yeah. I texted a video to everybody. Oh. Uh, the eight second video I texted to everybody that I had up in my phone. I'm like, this is how my day started. So <laughs> they were gonna run. There, if that car, if that car's apple wasn't bent, they would have been gone. Mm-hmm. I don't know why you run when you live that close to us. You know yep. Right? Thank God for surveillance cameras. So remember, buy, buy uninsured motorists, even if you're just buying cameras. liability. And have surveillance camera on you, okay? Go to what? Costco. They're affordable over there. <sighs> okay. Pop your knee. Yeah, my knee hurts whenever I bend to, to sit here. I'll see you guys tomorrow night, okay? Take care. Yeah, daddy, in a kimono.